Good morning. Uh, this is June 23rd, not to be confused with January the 23rd. And the reason that those two months could get flipped with me today is because we're here in our Swain Performance Center to talk about wrestling. And normally, uh, Coach Jaime is, when we're talking about wrestling, <laughs> we're talking about a winter sport. But things have shifted this year a little bit. So would you take just a minute and talk to us about how things have been different? And then we'll follow up with some pretty cool things that are coming up this week. So how has this season been different for you? Season's been different. Uh, start date of April was a little different for us. Um, we typically go from October to the end of middle of February. And uh, but with see this season, all the modifications that we made, we were going to go from April to June 26 if we were fortunate to have anybody still wrestling. And uh, and we are. We had we had four of our young men come through the regional tournament, so meaning they placed in the top four, and uh, and so they get to advance to this weekend state tournament down in uh, Kernersville at Glen High School. And so in a normal season, uh, from October to about February or March, about how many meets, matches, tournaments does your team uh, participate in? Uh, Coach Roper and I usually shoot for anywhere from 40 to 50 matches is kind of our sweep spot. Uh, we've kind of built our way up to that. And so with, with that, and I think we would have an additional, I would say, eight tournaments. And so uh, that would be our typical year. Uh, but with the modified season this year, we were not allowed to have any kind of tournaments until our conference tournament, regional and state tournament. So it, it was it was uh, it was a bit of a double edged sword. Mm -hmm. I felt like our kids were well rested, but at the same time, we weren't well uh, we weren't battle tested like we normally are. And so uh, so it, it was it was a different take on the season. Uh, development had to happen a little bit quicker for some of our kids and and uh, and for the ones that were able to kind of pick up with what we were asking them to do I mean they, they had the success that we thought they would and so because wrestling and baseball and track have all been happening at the same time this spring has that had an impact on on your sport and the others uh, I, I think most definitely I mean we're blessed to be in a community where we're our kids want to be a part of, of so many things. And so with that being said, we had kids that were playing baseball and wrestling and doing track. And so uh, there was uh, there was one meet where we, we were playing a baseball game down below and we were having to wait to start our wrestling meet so we could have a couple of those young men uh, come up and, uh, and weigh in and be a part of that, that event as well. And so uh, it's tough. I mean, it, it, it's been hard on them. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I feel like we are blessed to be in a place where, where we encourage our kids to be a part of as much as they can be. And I think that's part of the life of a 1A school also, because we don't have the preponderance of students to pull from that a 4A school would have. And so a lot of our students end up doing, uh, participating in two or even three sports a year. Yes, it just fell kind of differently and di more difficultly this year. Now, we are fortunate to have a very strong female wrestling program, and I believe that they have finished up now. Tell us just a little bit about that before we uh, close out talking about the meet this week. Um, yes, I, I, I'm very proud of the fact that Coach Roper and I uh, started our program last year, and uh, and I felt like we were probably one of the first to do it. Which uh, I think anytime you're the first of anything, there's there's some there's some growing pains and things to learn along the way. And uh, this year, with 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 the year, I guess the COVID year to call it, I guess our, our program took a little bit of a hit just because of the uncertainty of of what was going on and everything. But we still had a group of girls that wanted to wrestle. Uh, typically, again, uh, most of the girl actions happens at tournaments, and every now and then we would have a duel w with another program. Uh, this year, it wasn't. It was a little tougher just because we had to call other schools and we kind of had to match up, and so we weren't necessarily always. Uh, girl on girl pretty much close to the weight I mean sometimes they were lower sometimes they were higher but it was just opportunities to get to wrestle and so uh, we had a group of girls that did that with us this year um, Emmy Everhart uh, Chloe Lambert uh, Isabel Lambert Jesse Lohman and then we had some middle school girls with us as well uh, Pippa Welch um, Honey uh, what was Honey, honey 
Ecavera, and uh, and we had a couple more that, that are eluding me at the moment. And so we still had good participation. Uh, it wasn't to the level that it was last year, but I, I, we fully anticipate being uh, right back on track next year. And so uh, we just had our girls tournament, state tournament this past weekend. And uh, unfortunately we didn't have anybody come through, but uh, the fact that we had girls there participating, I, I think is what, what's gonna help hopefully one day officially sanction girls wrestling as a North Carolina High School Association sport. And I'm looking for that. Um, I think that that would be exciting for our girls, and I believe that that really needs to happen across the state of North Carolina. Because to my understanding, a female wrestling is the largest and fastest growing sport in America right now. That's my understanding. It is, and I mean, and again, I, I feel fortunate to be where we're at because we have a community and an administration that, that want to, to help foster the growth of that program where I know other coaches that, that are not in the same position where they have that community support and, and the willingness of their administration and their superintendent to say, hey, we can do this, let's do this, and, and we're blessed. Speaking of community support, um, your state meet starts this weekend for some of your wrestlers. Yes, when are you leaving and how can we help you? Uh, we are leaving at 1130 on Friday. Uh, I, I think we, we have a send off. So uh, anyone that would like to participate in that, just kind of stand out next to the road and wave to the guys. I know it's a, it's one of those things where it's kind of a tradition. Uh, other places, uh, they just load up and they go. And uh, again, uh, having the opportunity to sing the school song uh, on the way up the hill every day that we come back from a meet or an event is 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 it's kind of a part of who we are. And and uh, and I think having the opportunity for a young man or a young lady to be a part of that send off is is something that that will last them a long time. Well, I would encourage everyone who is available at 1130 on Friday, and that would be June the 25th, I believe, that you would come and meet us at least down on the bridge. Some of us like to congregate down there because it's just a meeting place for us because we want to cheer this group on. Now, that's not the only group that we have going to state competition this week, and we're going to break away from you and cut you free, Adam, um, because you need to prepare for wrestling practice here, and I also believe that the there will be football workouts in a little while in this building, and you're involved in both of those. And so as we push towards football workouts, getting ready for next year already, from the bottom of my heart and from everyone here, thank you for all you do, Adam, and for all of the coaches, because you all embody what is our best and then some. I mean, this is summertime, and you could be out doing something else, and yet you're here taking care of our students. So I hope you understand that we really appreciate you, yes, and uh, we'll cut you loose so you can go on to the next right. part of your day. Thank Thanks you so for your time today. Now, we've been talking about the fact that our coaches are here basically in the summertime uh, at a time of the year when we probably would be home or doing something else preparing for the next school year. Uh, and yet uh, you're involved, Coach Roper, in uh, not only in wrestling, which we were just speaking about, but you have also, I suppose, inherited the head coach position for both the female and the male track programs in the spring. So tell us a little bit about your season so far. I believe we've We've, we've had the opportunity to earn a couple of championships. And then uh, tell us what's coming up this week. Yes, sir. We've had a very good season on both the boys and the girls' side. Um, our girls won the conference championship. They're undefeated on this season, um, winning uh, every regular season meet we participated in, even against the bigger schools over in Buncombe County, and then winning our conference championship and the regional championship last week. And this week we're moving on to the state tournament um, where we are the favorites. And it's a good position to be in because we don't have to go down and have some sort of superhuman effort um, to be successful. We just need to go down and do what we do and run the times we run and and get the distances we jump and we throw and, and everything will take care of itself on the end, I believe, if we can do that. And so and that's a good place to be. Um, we, on the boys' side, uh, we had a very young team, largely made up of freshmen and sophomores. We had one senior in Mike Winchester, who also qualified for the state tournament. He'll be throwing discus down there this Friday. Um, and finished set, uh, third in the conference to senior laden Murphy and Hayesville teams and so I think our boys have put themselves in a position to be successful for several years moving forward and so it's been a it's been a very um, odd season 
um, you know, but we've uh, we've managed to hold the kids together and they've stayed invested in what we're doing. When a lot of programs, they've had kids that they left after conference and they said, we're not going to come to regionals. We're done at this point right. because school's out and our kids are ready to be gone and they're doing other things. But um, we have had strong senior leadership on the girls' side, you know, uh, specifically Jenna Marr. Mm-hmm. You know, we call, call her the colonel. She's not our captain. She's our colonel. Right. And, uh, and has kept those girls bought in and invested um, more so internally than we could as coaches externally, mm-hmm. you know, drive that. And so, so we're, we're grateful for, for that contribution. And, and you mentioned that you've been able to hold things together, and I don't know that everyone understands necessarily in the community how important athletics, uh, track, wrestling, whatever sport we're talking about, how important those are in keeping our students involved and invested uh, in, in the school year and, and in what they're doing. And um, that speaks very highly of, of what all of our coaches are doing and how important that is. Now, you'll be leaving to go to state on Thursday, June the 24th. What's the timing on that and how can we help you? Yes, sir. We're going to be pulling out at noon and uh, we'll have an escort through town. Um, anybody who would love to come out and help uh, cheer our girls on and wish them well on the way to state, um, we, we'd love to have you come out to town. We'll drive right down Everett Street and they could just meet us anywhere there on Everett um, and, and, uh, and wish the girls well on their way out of town. And I believe that's at noon. So uh, you all have two opportunities to help support what Swain County Schools are doing uh, Thursday, which is tomorrow at noon, and then Friday at 11.30 for our wrestling program as well. Coach Roper, you mentioned the fact that uh, we're the favorite this weekend, and that comes on the heels of the fact that our girls' track program has been very strong uh, for some time now. And you mentioned also that our boys are building a tradition uh, and that we've got some strength that's going to be moving up. All of that actually sits on the shoulders of the fact that our track program, both spring and fall cross cross country, has been very strong for 20, 25 years now. And the reason for that is because Oz Waters and uh, Dan Treehearn and the people that they were working with put that together uh, a long time ago when we actually had some of our first state championships in running. And uh, we just want to take a minute right now if you would join with me and we want to remember Oz because Oz passed uh, from this life last week after a battle uh, with uh, with dementia and Parkinson's and uh, he was a very well-loved person for our school system there are very few people people in our school system who you never hear anything negative about and Oz is one of those. Um, and he was one of my mentors, and uh, I'm going to miss him, and I know our community is. So if you all would pause, uh, we'll close out with this moment of silence in memory of Oz Waters and uh, some thoughts and prayers, perhaps, for his family. So join with us, okay? And so with those thoughts in mind, uh, we're going to close out this week. I want to say thank you to Adam Jamez and to Ian Roper and to all of our athletic staff for all of the energy and effort that they put into helping all of our athletes and even our school system be our best and then some. We'll be back with you next week. Uh, My hope and my plan is to show you some of the things that are happening in our summer program because we've got over 200 students in class right now getting ready for the coming year. So until then, thank you for being part of our family. We appreciate you so much. God bless you and have a great day.